Good morning, boys and girls, and happy Sabbath. What do you think I'm going to say today? Yes, we are blessed to be here another day. Blessed to make a mess? I'm okay. But just make sure you clean that mess, okay? Before we get started, I want to say hello to some people. And if I don't say your name, please, please send me a text, a shout out, a phone call, whichever one, same as Drina. I haven't heard my name in the last little bit and I will make sure. And please tell me when your birthdays are. I know Shana had a birthday. I know Jaden had a birthday. I know Tanya had a birthday. Um, I know some other people had birthdays, but Juliet had a birthday. What happened? I know I have more people. So let me know. I want to say hello to London and Kalina. Hello. And the Richmond family. Malika, Chris, the whole Richmond family. I like to say hello to the Carmo family. Hello, people. I miss you. And Abby, Naomi, Deshane, Zion, I miss you. Ariel, Malia, I miss you guys. Alia, we have Alia and Alia, I miss you. Hey, Alia. And Armani, what happened? I haven't seen you in a while. I know. Wave to me. In my mind, you're waving to me. And Neil, Sarai, miss you. Love you guys. Celeste, tell baby Annie I said hello. Chaz, Azriel, and I like to say hello to Jaciel and Ethan and Arlen. Arlen, gotta say it right, Arlen. Hello, you guys. I miss you guys. Miss Faith, miss you. And Nadesh, I miss you. Silent, Silent Isaac, Miss Trina misses you. <laughs> Rhoda and Fraha, I miss you guys. Miss you, miss you, miss you a whole lot. I want to make a correction last week with King Joash. The name of the priest was Jehoiada. I said it was Jehoiakim. So many names, but it's Jehoiada. Okay? And last week, LJ, he told me the answer to my question. What was Moses' mom's name? And he, what was her name? Jacobet. I remember. Good job, LJ. Good job. Okay? I got something coming to you. Alrighty? Before we get started... What should we always do? The first thing we do when we wake up in the morning, before we get out of bed, what should we do? We should pray. Very good. So let's bow our heads and let's pray before we get started. Your eyes aren't closed yet. Good job. Dear Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing us to see each other one more week. Lord, I'm asking you to please bless us as we go through each day that we may become stronger in faith by reading our Bibles and praying every day and that we may grow our seeds of patience, of love, of kindness, and of faith in all other good seeds so that when we go out in public or when we see you again, we will have nothing but love for anyone and everyone we see. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, you know we see our pastors. How many of you seen your pastor? Seen the pastor stand in front of the church and he would tell us about God and all these wonderful things. And he reads from the Bible and he teaches us lessons, wonderful lessons. Or your Sabbath school teachers and they just tell you all these wonderful things. Well, today's lesson is about things in your house, things that you find in your house. So let's see some of the things that we find in our house. You wanna know what this is? <laughs> this look like a lampshade. 
But you know what a lampshade does? A lampshade is on a lamp and it gives you, it's like an umbrella. It gives you shade. And you remember the children of Israel when they were walking through the, they were in the wilderness and God protected them. He protected them with, at nighttime, he would have a pillar of fire to help them see where they're going. And in the daytime, he would provide them with shade to protect them from the sun, protect them from burning up and getting hot and dehydrated. How about, let's see what else we have in here. <gasps> wow. You know what this is? This is my tape measure. So when I get into things and I start fixing things at home and building things, I use this to measure. How can you, can you think of a story that maybe had a measuring tape? Uh, gave measurements. Uh, I'm not going to make that much of a question. <laughs> How about Noah? Mm. When God told Noah to build the ark and he told him how long, it, how big he wanted it. I don't think it was 26 inches. He thought, he said 300 cubits long. This is, it's more than what I'm showing you, but it's 300 cubits long. And it is 50 wide. So long could be this way and wide could be this way. And 30 high. So, so wide, so wide, so long, so high. See that? Let me see. Um, 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 how about? Oh, I like this one. Let me show you what it is. Can you tell what it is yet? Oh, gotta open it. Pieces of a puzzle. Who loves to do puzzles? I do. Let me tell you what I found in the Bible. I'm going to use my Bible today. I use it all the time. But today I'm going to tell you where I found these things. So, in Jeremiah chapter 29. Okay? So we go... Genesis, no, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles, Esther, Nehemiah, what? What? Did I say it wrong? Let's see. Let's do it again. Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles, Esther, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, and Psalms. I have to think about that. Woo! I got to review that. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Solomon, Isaiah. What comes after Isaiah? Jeremiah. So in Jeremiah chapter 29, the book of Jeremiah chapter 29, and verse 11 through 13, but I'm going to read you verse 13. You will seek me. That means you will look for me and you will find me. See, when we search for God, we can find him. And we look for him. If we look for him with all our hearts, we'll find him. And God will show himself to us. And just like when we look for God, when we play with our puzzle, we have to look for all the pieces. Sometimes we start with all the edges. Some people start with the colors. And when we put it all together, and we take our time with patience, 
that's where the seed of patience come in. And with patience, we will find all the pieces and put them all together. Just like when we look for God, we will find him and he will look for us too. He will show himself to us. Okay? So we look for Jesus and he will show himself to us. Let's see what we have. I know you guys want to see what's in my box. Let me see. Oh. What does Miss Drina say about this? Miss Drina always say, make sure you get permission from your mom and dad to use it. But today we're going to learn a lesson about scissors. Do you know what a lesson could be about scissors? Scissors can be something that helps you and scissors can be something that hurts you. You know what it reminds me of? Your tongue. Yep. Your tongue. Your scissors are like your tongue. Let me tell you in the Bible what it says about the scissors and your tongue. And in Psalms, I have it here, in Psalms chapter 52 and verse 2. So that's Psalms. And Psalms, remember? Chapter is the book, Psalms chapter 52 and verse 2. And it says, your, son, your tongue, it tells lies, it tells mischief. And it's like a sharp razor. A tongue can say ugly things to people and hurt their feelings that you cannot take back. Once it's out of your mouth, it cannot go back in. It can't. So you have to be careful with the things that you say because just like scissors, your tongue can hurt and cut someone down. Thou lovest evil more than good. Some people like to say ugly things more than good things. Okay. Now, if someone was to say something ugly to you, what does God tell us we should do? Say something ugly to them? No. God tells us we should do what? We should forgive. We hear forgiveness a lot in the Bible. We hear about loving people in the Bible a lot. We do. And if you hear it a lot in the Bible, that means God wants us to do these things. But you can't say you love someone if you have a tongue like scissors that will cut somebody down with ugly words. Okay? So how about if we use our tongues to say only kind words, to build people up and not to break them down? Think about that. <laughs> you know what this is? When we do God's word and when we study when we study our Bibles and when we pray and we grow, we sow our seeds, we become that <laughs> we become that light. We become that light for God. Let your light so shine before men that others, that other people will see your good works and that they will come and glorify God. We can do that. You don't have to be a grown-up to do that. You can be that wonderful, nice person that says only kind words. And you're loving to everyone. Because that's the seed that you're growing. See this? This is my rope. And a rope is strong. Do you know what it reminds me of? God the Father, God the Son, 
and God the Holy Spirit. So God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are strong by themselves, but they're greater together. I can't break this. I cannot break this. And if we have this in our lives, the devil can't break this. It's nothing he can do. Not even with his ugly tongue. This one, I know everybody knows what this is. It gets, it gets lost in my house. You know what it is? It is my charger. We have chargers, our phones, our tablets, our computers, our laptops. But you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of God. That when you plug your phone in and it gets a full charge. See, I plug my phone in and I have a full charge. But after a while, that charge goes down and eventually it runs out. So we have to charge ourselves. We charge our phones by plugging it in and it recharges all over again. Let me show you my charger. This is my charger. It charges me every single day. So even if you read a chapter or chapters or you read a verse every day, you are growing. Not only reading it, but using it. If you read a verse and you don't understand it, you get the dictionary and you see if you can figure it out. If not, you ask your parents, can you help me understand this? I used to call my mom and have her explain things and we would discuss it. I wasn't grown I wasn't even a little kid. I would do it. And I still do it. Sometimes when I don't understand something, I call Pastor Joe or Richard, Pastor Richard. And I talk to them and sometimes I talk to someone else. And we discuss it and we have an understanding. So reading the Bible is not just words. It is the most interesting book you will ever read. But every day, if you don't charge yourself with this charger, your batteries are going to run low. And then you're going to start to forget God. And you're going to start doing all the things the devil wants you to do. And you will have bad thoughts bad words you won't believe in Father, Son and Holy Ghost your light won't shine it will get dimmer and dimmer every day I want to grow and I want to stay cool in Christ how about you if I put all these pieces together, if I put my spiritual pieces together, the fruits of the Spirit, the Ten Commandments, my Beatitudes, if I put on my armor, if I have all these things, and the more I read, the stronger I get, just like I would in Christ, okay? So you guys think about that. See if you can find some things around the house, and you and your parents can... See what lesson you can learn from those things inside the house. And let me know. That would be my, my test. That would be my trivia for you guys. Find something in your house and let me know in the link below and tell me what's the Bible story behind it that you could think of. Okay? All righty. Now, it was lovely talking to you guys.
and I'm going to continue reading my Bible so I can continue being that light for God. Okay? And just like, let me turn off my light for now. I'm not turning off my light for God, but I'm turning off my light. But you know what? I just say this to tell you that just like we have all these ordinary things that you find around your house, guess what? God uses ordinary people just like you and me to do his work, to go and tell people about him. You know who else was ordinary people that helped out? And these were children. How about, I'm going to tell you right now, the little servant girl that um, told Captain Naaman that spoke to him, told his wife about where he can go and get healed. She was a little girl. How about King Joash? Told you about him last week. He was only seven when he became king. Ordinary people. And Miriam, Moses' sister. She was an ordinary little girl. But she helped, she kept her eye on the person that would bring them out of Egypt. She did big things. They all did big things. And just like these children did big things, you can do big things as well. Okay? Now let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day and thank you for all that you've done for us. Bless us and protect us and help us that we may grow stronger in faith and love and patience and kindness towards everyone. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I forgot one more thing. You see this? This is my fishing rod. No, Miss Drina does not fish. I tried it before. I caught two little fishes like that. I don't do worms. But you know what this reminds me of? When Jesus called his disciples to be fishers of men. What do you think? I like that. So, remember I told you last week we needed paint from the dollar store and string, paper, I wanted to draw something just with ordinary things. We don't have to go out and, and get these expensive paint brushes and all of those things. We can paint with anything. God was an artist. He spoke it. The only thing he touched with his hands was me, Adam and Eve. So, I put paint colors in each one of my little cups. Now you need to make sure you're in the kitchen and that your parents are with you and you ask for help because you need permission for your scissors, okay? And I have my scissors and my string and I cut a piece of string long enough to dip it in the paint, just like I did. Each one of these cups have a piece of string. And that's what we're gonna paint with. We're gonna paint with string. And we're gonna paint something that, whatever it comes out to be, you have to use your imagination and figure out what it looks like. I know my, what mine, what I want mine to look like. It doesn't mean that it's gonna end up looking like that, but that's what I want it to look like. So, you take your paper, After you dip your string in the paint, try not to get them tangled in the, in the paint, okay? It's going to be a little messy, so make sure you do it in the kitchen or outside if it's warm enough. And then you lay it on your paper. Okay? And you can do one at a time. Let's try it one at a time so you can see what it looks like. Okay? 
And when you do that, just drag it. Keep it on the paper and just drag it all the way off. And make sure you put it back in the paint water or in the paint. Ready? I have my paper towel to clean up my mess. Always clean up your mess. What do you think this might look like? It doesn't look like much, but when you do yours, you'll see what it might look like. I think I'm going to use red next. Ooh, it's such a mess. And lay it down. And I think I'm going to put my blue on. Now, let's do the red first. And pull it. Ooh, 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 ooh. I see what it's looking like to me. Hopefully you'll see it when you do yours. Now I'm going to do my blue. Lay it down. Don't pull it until you lay it down. And you can do it as often as you want. Put it back in the paint. And make sure you stay wherever your parents put you to work on this. That's where you stay. I think I want to do another red. I'm going to put little dots. You can do anything you want to with it. And I'm going to lay it down. And then I'm going to pull it. I'm going to put it back in my cup. Make sure I keep my mess in the same area, okay? One more. I think yellow. I'm gonna do yellow. Yellow's a little different. This is what I have. Let me clean up what got on the table. That's why you have to be in one spot. Make sure your parents give you permission to work in one spot. I can't draw on the wet paint, but I'm gonna try my best to show you what mines look like. I don't, I don't know if you'll know what it looked like until it's done. When you do it like this, it actually ends up looking like flowers. If you can see it, my imagination shows me flowers. And I hope your imagination shows you whatever you think it is. Okay? Oh, I'm just doing something. <gasps> Funny, oh. oh, oh, my pen is, is actually showing me some things I can do with my picture. Oh, this is so cool. I'm gonna show you right now. I hope you can see what I see. Right before I close it up. If you look at it, they look like long flowers. They look like fluted flowers. You know what kind of birds like long flowers and short flowers? If you look at it, see the long flowers, and this is the top part of the flower. See that? 
That is so cool. But you can try doing different pictures with them. Whether you try a butterfly or flowers. I don't know if we can do butterflies real quick. We're gonna try real quick. Uh, oh, it looks like a leaf. <gasps> oh, that's a pretty leaf. Let me show you. I don't think I want to make a butterfly anymore. Not a leaf, but um, a feather. Put that back in. Doesn't it look like a feather? <laughs> I made a feather by accident. Oh, I love it. I'm not going to do anything else. That's my feather. Okay? But you guys keep trying and do, do your pictures. And make sure you send me pictures of your pictures. And let me see what your imagination showed you. Okay? Alrighty. Now let's pray. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Close your eyes. Dear Jesus, thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for allowing us to see each other. Lord, please bless us and help us as ordinary people that when we go out that others may see your good works through us and that we can also be fishers of men. Lord, please bless our tongues that we may speak only kind words. Bless our thoughts that we may think only kind things. Bless our hands that we may do your good work. Bless our feet that we may go where you want us to go. Bless our knees when we kneel to pray. And dear Jesus, please bless our hearts that we may grow that seed of love and that we may love each and every one. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And remember, I love you. Bye-bye. Come on.